So we are here to get our people to repentance. Our brothers got to realize they're the mightiest thing that God put on this earth. And it's time for us to leave. take a soul, stand fast in the faith. People need me, so I can't fall. We're trying to elevate Enoch or Elijah for the Messiah. Keeping commandments, not try even fire. You filthy if you full of sin. The kingdom you won't enter in. Why she making clean for the husband comes to clean? These well, women I'm are tired of it. Rest, so I'll make it plain. Messiah coming only for the elect. You better walk circumspect on the highways and hedges. Purge that spiritual house of all heaven. Charge of a prophet. They think they're tired. Of they are the tired. Brothers, Charge where you at? Of a prophet. Charge of a prophet. Gotta stay the lost soul. Who's the king? Right. Who's the king? Right. What time is it? What? Murder is a big topic this week. All across the nation. All across the nation they've been talking about murder. Why they been talking about murder all week? Do you know? You got Facebook? You rarely own it. Okay, that's why you don't that's why you don't know, because it's been huge all over the internet. Let's talk about murder. Give me Exodus. 20. Listen to something. If I let's say I'm a drug dealer, right? And the brother on the neighboring block, he a drug dealer too. We hate each other, not kill him. Is that right? Why ain't it right if I kill him? That's breaking one of God's laws. And I took somebody's life, right? I took a brother. A uncle, a auntie, you get what I'm saying? Somebody's sister, somebody's cousin. People are dying in Chicago at an alarming rate, right? Why we don't think the same thing about babies? Watch this, read this, read this, read. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 13. Thou shall not kill. When the Bible said thou shall not kill, that is to say thou shall not kill anybody except a baby in your womb. Does it say that? Thou shall not kill. Wait a minute. Since when did we get duped into believing that if the baby is in the woman's stomach, it's not a baby? Does that even make sense? Wait a minute. Forget the smoke screen. Forget everything else that people talking about. We talking about, read it again. Thou shalt not kill. We talking about a very simple commandment. That's simple, right? So I cannot walk up to you and just kill you. Pretty simple, right? So why is it socially acceptable for a woman to walk inside a building pregnant and walk out not pregnant? An hour later. I'll show you why. Give me Proverbs 3 and 31. Whenever the Israelites were in any type of captivity, right? Whether it was Egypt all the way today in Babylon, it has always been socially acceptable for our children to be killed before they were born. I'll say it again. Whenever the so-called Blacks Hispanics were under the rule of another nation, it was always made acceptable for us to kill our babies. Read it out. I'm gonna prove it to you. Read this. The Book of Proverbs, chapter three, verse thirty-one. Envy thou not the oppressor, uh -huh. and choose none of his ways. So the Bible said, as you Israelites get through these captivities, right, and wait on the coming of the just one. Don't envy the oppressor and don't choose none of the ways that he would choose. I'll show you why. The book of Sirach, chapter 12, verse 10. That's it. Never trust thine enemy, uh -huh. for like as I am rested, so is his wickedness. So we said, envy thou not the oppressors and choose none of his ways, right? And the question is why? Because the Bible said, don't trust your enemies. That's right. They market this thing as if it's a woman's rights. Bring it out. As if a baby is not in the woman's stomach. Bring it out. As if God said, thou shalt not kill. Teach it. To hell with politicians. See, this is this our people problem. Either we are heavy into politics or heavy into religion. Teach and it out. in this place, it's the same thing. Teach right. There is no difference. Right? Two wings of the same bird, Republican or Democrat. Which is why when you look at history, right, the, di the Republicans emancipated the slaves. Was that good for us or bad for us? 
That was good for us, right? The Democrats was against emancipating the slaves, right? Now you fast forward to today, and it's the same thing. A lot of the rights that people vote for, a lot of people that march with Dr. Martin Luther King, they were Democrats. What am I saying? It doesn't matter what party it is, it's only about whether or not it benefits your people and if it follow up with God's laws. That's all that it's about. So watch this, I'm gonna give you an example. Give me the book of Jeremiah 32. Bring it out! I'm gonna show you the same thing in the history of our people killing our children. Right. Same thing. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 32. 35. Verse 35. Bring it out! And they built the high places above. Baal was a demon god. Right. So they went and they built these places for this demon god, read. Which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom uh -huh. to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech. To pass through the fire of Molech was a ritual. What they would do is they would have a child, a brand new baby. You got to think the baby two months old. Right. There's a goddess, a Baal statue, right? And they drop the baby. They set a fire underneath it. And the Baal statue, his arms are open. And they drop the baby in between the arms of that god. And the baby falls in the fire. And guess what happens to the baby? The baby dies. The baby burns to death. What am I showing? It has always been socially acceptable whenever the Israelites was in captivity for us to kill our babies. Right. This place is nothing new under the sun. But here's what happens. Our people don't know that they're the Israelites. That's right. And they don't know their history. Right. Even a wise man will tell you, if you don't learn your history, it's bound to repeat itself. It Read it again. It and they built the high places of Baal, uh -huh. which are in the valley of the sons of Hinnom, uh -huh. to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not. Which I what? Which I commanded them not. When did God command them not to do it? When you read the book of Exodus and Leviticus. We out. just read it. Thou shall not kill. It doesn't matter the symptoms of the killing. It ha doesn't have to be an 18-year-old boy that, kill that kills a 21-year-old boy. Right. It can be a 19-year-old mother that kills a baby that's six months in the womb. Right. God look at both of them the same way. At some point, somebody got to stand up for God. That's right. Somebody got to stand up for God at some point. Watch this. Statistics. Statistics. Pull that article that I sent you. I'm going to show you statistics on abortion in the black neighborhood. You up. think gun violence is the number one killer in the black neighborhood. You're sadly mistaken. The most dangerous place for a black child to be is not in his house in the city of Chicago. It's in his mother's womb. Teach. Throughout all of the nation. And I'll prove it. Read the article. National statistics. So this is national statistics. Here's what they do. Every time they kill a baby, you have to fill out that form. They keep track. They might make you mark if you're African American or Latino or Caucasian. They actually been keeping track of how many of our babies have been killed throughout this process that women are fighting for the right to do. Bring it up. Listen to the statistics. These are the facts. Read it. More than 19 million black babies have been aborted since the 1973 Roe versus Wade U.S. Supreme Court decision legalized abortion in our country. So, how many? More than how many? More than 19 million black babies. So, the statistics show since 1973, our sisters have aborted 19 million babies. That's right. 19 million babies. How dare somebody try to take the right away from them to kill more? Bring it out. 19 million. Let's keep reading the statistics. Bring it out. Maybe it's not that big of a deal. I think it is. Because God thinks it is. That's right. Read. Black women has significantly higher abortion rates than whites and Hispanics. 36% uh -huh. of all abortions in the U.S. in 2014 were performed on black women. So 36% of all the abortions happen to black women. Men and they walk in and got 36% of all abortions. Now that, that might seem a little insignificant. 
But watch the next part. However, only about 13.3% of the total population is black. Wait a minute, so we make up 36% of all the abortions, but only 13% of everybody in the country, including men and women, are black people. Bring it out. So if 13% is men and women of black people, then you probably got about half of that, that's women. So you got about 8% of black women in this country, but we make up 36% of the abortions. Bring it out. Here's what, give me the book of Jeremiah. I mean, give me Lamentations. Lamentations 348. This is why the, this is why the prophet Jeremiah wrote this in the Bible. Watch what he used to say, come on. The book of Lamentations, chapter three, verse 48. My eye runneth down with the rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. He said, man, I can't do nothing but cry for the destruction of the daughters of our people. Cry for them, why? Because we have made it socially acceptable to use abortions as a means of contraception. Right? A sister can lay with a man, let the baby develop in her womb over the process of four, five, six, seven, nine months, and then kill the baby. That's an actual law. You can actually do that thing in this place. It's cruel. It's cruel. Read it again. The book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 48. My eye runneth down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. Lamentations 4 and 3. So the prophet Jeremiah said, I'm crying because of the mindset, the destruction of our sisters. We actually have sisters that look like us that are following the ways of the oppressors and killing the children. Teach. Read that, Lamentations 4. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 3. Uh -huh. Even the sea monsters draw out the breasts. So the Bible says, even the sea monsters, right? The, 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 the ugly animals that might live in the water. It says they draw out the breasts. They actually nourish their children. Bring it out. This is what the Bible is saying. Remember, the Bible is written to and from the Israelites. Who are the Israelites, you so-called blacks and Hispanics? That's the Bible is documenting your behavior, the behavior of your forefathers, which just so happens to be the same behavior today. That's why the scriptures say whatsoever thing was written aforetime was written for our learning. Right. There's no new thing under the sun. It, it said even the sea monsters, read it again. Even the sea monsters draw out the breasts. They give suck to their young ones. The daughter of my people is become cruel. But he said, but the daughter of my people who are what? The Israelites, so-called blacks and Spain, said they become cruel. They cruel. Why? Read. Like the ostriches in the wilderness, uh -huh. the tongue of the sucking child cleaveth to the root of his mouth for thirst. Uh -huh. The young children ask bread. And you know why? No kid is being nourished. This is talking, when you read this scripture, it's talking about neglecting the children. Not thinking about the children, being selfish. It's the same thing that happens today. So here's the question. In order for a child to be produced, what must happen? What happened? Say it again. She gotta have sex. Nobody's talking about this point. Nobody's talking about this point, right? Everybody wants to talk about what or not to do with the child after the woman gets pregnant, right? The Bible is about preventable solutions, though. Here's the thing. You know, you don't miraculously get pregnant. Give me the book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Bring it up! A lot of times we use a lot of other avenues in order to make clean our mistakes with God. Make clean our sins. The Bring Lord is out. against that thing. That's why the scriptures say you heap sin upon sin. Because first you fornicate, then you get pregnant, then you kill a baby. Bring it out. That's sin upon sin upon sin. Read it again. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Uh -huh. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. Here's what the Bible say. When you are married, it is honorable, and the bed is undefiled. What does that mean? Is it married women that are lining up to get these abortions? No, it's not. 
It's not the married women that's lining up to get this stuff done. It's the single sisters, the college sisters, the ones that think they got a career ahead of them. They got a whole life to live. That's jumping from man to man. Right. That might be into some type of prostitution, selling their body and end up pregnant. Bring it out. But the Bible says that what? Read it again. Marriage is honorable and all, uh -huh. and the bed undefiled. Read. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. There is a judgment behind a brother just sleeping with woman to woman to woman to woman. Even though we've made it in our neighborhoods culturally acceptable, it's against God. There is a judgment behind a woman that goes and sleeps with man to man to man to man before out. marriage. These are fundamental principles that in repentance, the Israelites must learn again. We must learn that in repentance, we can change our communities, but only in repentance. Right. So you have two sides of it. You have the killing baby side, right? Then you have the other side with no marriage, where a woman actually has the child, and there's no man to help bring up the child. You get what I'm saying? Does our community, in comparison, let's say, let's say the north side of Chicago, which one of them you think has more single parent households? Definitely us. What, what's the difference between the north side and the south side, though? Location? Right, right. It's more Caucasians on the north side and it's us on the south side. Here's what happens when we envy our oppressors. We lose our sense of morals now. That's right. This place is built to make you question basic morals. Like, is that really a baby that's in my stomach for six months? Bring it out. That's not a baby. That's an embryo. Bring it out. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's a baby. Just like you call a newborn baby a newborn. He get a little older, you call him a toddler. Right. You call him an infant. Whatever name you want to use, that is a child right. in your womb. So what's the solution? Read it again. Bring it out. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, in the bed undefiled. So when you see the Planned Parenthood that's down the street, why would something like that be set in our neighborhoods? Nine out of ten Planned Parenthoods are in black and Hispanic communities. I'll say it again. Nine out of ten Planned Parenthoods are in black and Hispanic communities. The right to abort wasn't made for the so-called Caucasian race. That wasn't made for them. I'm going to show you the same thing. Pharaoh did the same thing. You got it? Bring it out. Read. The book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 15. Here's what I'm doing again. I'm proving that this abortion stuff ain't just came on the earth in Babylon the Great. Bring it out. As you read uh, captivity after captivity after captivity, even the Romans, you read about them killing the male children. Watch this. Read. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives of which the name of one was Shipra, and the name of the other, Pua. Midwives were the women that delivered babies. Read. And he said, when ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women. He said, when you deliver the Hebrew women babies, the Hebrews were the Israelites. The Israelite babies. Listen to the command he given them, read. And see them upon the stools. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. You shall what? Kill him. They were instructed that every male child that the woman pushes out to kill the child. Bring it out. Now you might say to yourself, nobody's instructing these women, women to get abortions. But watch this. One of the curses of God. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 48. Watch this. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48. Uh -huh. Bring it out. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things so when you have to go some to another nation whenever you're hungry or thirsty or want a driver's license birth certificate you want a new job you want a new car you want to get a finance loan you want to start a business you want to get work permits whatever it is you go to that other nation right read and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck in slavery we have physical yokes of iron on our neck that's right physical yokes of iron. Why? Because it was a way to restrict you, to make sure you did what you were told. The Bible says that he would put physical yokes of iron on our neck until when? 
until he had destroyed thee. Until you were destroyed. Now you look around at our people. We got yokes of iron on our neck right now. No, right? We like wearing chains and stuff like that. No big deal. But you got to see what the Bible is saying. It it's saying that you would have the yokes of iron on your neck until when? Until you were mentally destroyed. That's right. Now he no longer has to come and make people abort your child or kill your child. You'll do it yourself. That goes back to that Proverbs 3 and 31. Envying the oppressor and choosing his ways. So what has to happen? Because I'm a man, right? I know it's some sister out there thinking, oh, this is a dude. How, who is he to speak on a woman's body? Let me tell you something. The prophets always spoke on the nation of Israel. Man or woman. It didn't matter, right? But the Bible, give me the book of Titus, the second chapter. The Bible also set up older women to teach the younger women right from wrong. Believe it or not. Give me Titus chapter 2. Start at verse 3. Watch this. The book of Read Titus, chapter 2, verse 3. The aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. So the aged woman mean the older women that you see, right? These women that are in their mid-40s, they 50s, they 60s. These women are the aged women that actually have an obligation from God to be in holiness. Read. Not false accusers. Not false accusers meaning they like to lie a lot. They like to gossip. Right? Read. Not giving to much wine. Meaning they ain't drunks. Read. Teachers of good things. Ah, they supposed to teach good things. The older women are supposed to be teachers of good things. That's right. Watch this. Read. That they may teach the young women. Wait a minute. So the older women are supposed to be teachers of good things. And they're supposed to teach the younger women. You're not seeing 45 and 55 year olds inside Planned Parenthood. Right, You're seeing 16, 15, 19, 22, 24. Why? Because we're missing this in our community. That's right. We missing the older one. The older women now want to be like Nicki Minaj just as much as the 19 year old one be like right. Cardi B. Right. You get what I'm saying? At some point, the Lord has to raise up first the prophets to get the sisters in order in order to be able to implement this. That's, right. That's why you important. Our brothers out here trying to sell dope for a little bit of money that ain't going to last long. But we'd rather do that than to help raise up the greatest people to ever set foot yes, on this sir. earth. You so-called blacks and Hispanics, you are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. And your obligation to God is greater than your obligation to fight fit in America's system. That's right. That's your reality. Listen, America is not the place of our rest. This ain't the land of the free and the home of the brave for us. That's this right. is the place of our punishment. That's right. We are not at rest. And you so-called black men, it's your obligation to get the nation back in order. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth.
So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.